Praise the Lord. Greetings to you all in the precious name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. I welcome you all to my channel this beautiful morning. It's morning here. <laughs> so welcome. Good morning. Good night. Good evening to all of those in different parts of the world who are watching. I wish, I pray you all had a blessed day in the Lord Jesus. Today what I'm going to talk is about is the most expected topic that brothers and sisters have been asking me for i think months 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 today i actually come to the scripture part of it you know i only give you one scripture um in the third or the fourth or maybe the second video about where the lord said about vanity scripture wise and today we're going to talk about where does it say in the bible that you should not do it and why you should not do it before I go into the scripture, let me tell you one thing. Thank you so much for the, your emails. And if you're, if I've not replied to you, it's because I'm working on somebody else. I will slowly get to you. So please be patient with me. Thank you for all your prayers and supports, support and encouragement. I live on that. I thrive on it. If it was not for you, I would not be in here. Yes, one thing I want to say is the in the emails, one, one thing that I keep on seeing again and again is the satanic bondage and the satanic uh, oppression on Christians. So while you're waiting for your answer, and I like I said to a lot of brothers and sisters, I'm going to make a video on... Uh, Prayer, fasting, speaking in tongues, all of that would be combined, but it would be after the holiness video. So while you're waiting for those answers and while you're waiting on the Lord, I want you to do one more thing. If you're praying for something, it could be health of the child, spouse to come back, your health, um, demonic oppression, witchcraft. I don't care what it is while you are waiting for your answer. If you have not received your answer till now, it's been two months, three months, four months, five months, one year, two years, three years, five years, 10 years, 20 years. If you have not received your answer, it should tell you something you're doing is not, not enough. You have to go higher. You have to pray harder. You have to go deeper. In the Bible, the disciples come to the Lord and says, Father, why can't we drive out that demon the way you did it, you know? And what does the Lord say? This kind only goes by prayer and fasting. This kind means this type, this rank, this higher devil only goes by fasting. That's why some of you have to do is start fasting. Some of the emails that I'm receiving is Satan is coming in the night and dragging you out of the bed and throwing you on the floor. Um, your things are going missing from your water bottle to your pencils, to your pen, to your phone, to your lamp. Furniture are moved. That is intense witchcraft, y'all. You have to go deeper in the spirit realm. If you don't have a pastor praying for you, if you don't have a sister praying for you, you yourself need to start amping up your prayer life, increasing the intensity of your prayer life. Incorporate it with fasting. The devil has to, has to, has to, has to go away. He has to move away when you incorporate fasting because it's a higher level of a obedience to the to the Lord Jesus so incorporate fasting I'm going to attach some videos I'm not even going to talk about fasting I'm going to attach some videos so that you could be blessed by what these men of God are talking about fasting and disclaimers again children above 10 can watch my videos especially this one I'm not going to talk anything that is not suitable for the younger audience the second thing is disclaimer what I'm going to talk is purely and strictly about my faith and my religion it has nothing to do about my work even if i may give some examples it has nothing to do about my work so the first scripture that the lord gave me was from genesis and again this is also from other brothers and sisters not just just me as well a uh, lot of research done genesis chapter 35 verses 2 to 5 genesis chapter 35 verses 2 to 5 jacob said to his household and to all who were with him, put away the foreign gods. Commentary says foreign gods mean idolatry and superstition. Idolatry and superstition in that time. Which are among you. Purify yourself and change your garments. Did you read that in the scripture before? I have read it so many times. I never paid attention. Purify yourself and change your clothes your garments. The third scripture, it says, but let us arise and go to Bethel 
and I will make there an altar unto God who answered me in the day of my distress and has been with me in the way which I have gone. Scripture number four. So they, they as in the household, the family members, gave Jacob all their foreign gods, all their foreign gods, which were in their hands, and the earrings which were in their ears. Did you all read that? The earrings which were in their ears. I read it a hundred times, never paid attention to that scripture. Why does the holy word highlight earrings like it's boom earrings too right there in the book of genesis the first book the lord says no earrings and god told jacob to get rid of that earrings which were in their ears and jacob hid them under the oak tree at shechem the commentary or the different translations and commentaries say that say about what does it say about earrings Kaufman's and Clark's commentary says that these earrings, there was nothing innocent about them. There was nothing innocent about them. These are idolatrous. These are of idolatrous significance used as amulets or talismans covered with allegorical figures or mysterious sentences formed under some constellations with magical images. Rewind this and hear it again, what I said. Did you catch everything? What the earrings stand for? In the ancient days, from the time of Jacob, all of that. Hit rewind and hear what I said. Let's keep on moving. That was the first scripture that the Lord said. Earrings have spiritual attachments into the spirit realm. Thank God we, I never got my ear pierced. My parents never pierced my ears. Thank God. Even if you have pierced, you know, the Lord forgives. I'm not saying that. I never had an attachment and attraction to wear it. Thank God. But little did I know the spiritual ramifications behind wearing earrings. You cannot take a satanic Bible and purify it. You cannot take an earring and purify it. It's right here in the first book. And most of us just read and say, oh, it was during that time, during Jacob's time, without understanding he's telling right now too, because it belongs, it has a spiritual connection and it belongs to Satan himself. Let's keep on moving. The most common chapter, the, the words that people say during, about vanity is 1 Peter um, chapter 3, verses 3 onwards. 1 Peter chapter 3, verses 3. It says that do not let your adornment be that of outward adorning, outward adorning. I'm going to dissect word by word by word by word. Do not let your adornment be of that of outward adorning. Now, translations and commentary says out, outward adorning means external ad adornment or external adoration. That means starting from hair, hair such as plating of hair we all all indians plate their hair i stopped plating my hair after i got a scriptural reference that not braiding is also plating do not plate your hair according to the word of god tie it up put it in a bun leave it loose i don't care what you do let it be in its natural state do not plate your hair because it has a spiritual implication sisters from india do not plate your hair. It says right there in the word of God. Do not do it. Again, it goes deeper in the word. Stay with me. Plating of the hair or braiding of the hair or arranging of the hair or the amplified version says interweaving and elaborate knotting of the hair or fancy hair, fancy hairstyles and elaborate hairdos and or do not use outward aids to fix your hair. Just that one word. One one line, one sentence means all of this. Rewind in here if you didn't catch that. Let's keep on moving. First Peter chapter th 3 verses 3 continues. So do not let it be from outward adorning. The second thing he says is do not let it be from jewelry and wearing gold jewelry. He specifically says gold jewelry. We Indians love to wear gold jewelry. I think even the African culture loves to wear gold jewelry. 
So the word of God says, and wearing gold jewelry and or putting on gold ornaments or wearing any jewels of gold, any jewels, any jewels, and or adorning by putting oneself with things of gold. gold. And that is the second point. The third point, or by wearing fine apparel is what the word says. What is fine apparel? That means putting on fine clothes, wearing expensive, flashy, extravagant, alluring. Wow, alluring is what? Seductive clothes. Those clothes that you can see your neck, your back, your thighs. Seductive clothes. Those tight pants. Brothers, sisters, we both brothers as well tight pants tight jeans torn pants showing your private areas um, all of those it should not be of those kind and or luxurious or costly apparel now indians i can only talk about indians because i come from that culture how expensive clothes do you wear for your wedding i am responsible for that too for my brother's wedding the clothes that we wore was thousands of indian rupees I wish we knew about that. I wish we knew about that right there. We would not have done that, you know. Didn't know, didn't know any better. Thousands of Indian rupees spent on, on vanity. The Lord says, uh-uh, don't do it. Don't do it. Not my children, not my bride, not my daughter, not my son. You are my bride. Uh-uh, don't do it. Don't do it. The third scripture is 1 Timothy chapter 2, verses 9. You know, that first, uh, the first Peter, I just stopped it right there because I was just talking about the uh, vanity portion. I didn't talk about what he says you should do. I'm just talking of what he should not do. So I hope you caught that. So first Timothy chapter two, verses nine. In like manner, also women adorn themselves in modest apparel. Now, the word modest apparel is broken down into a whole paragraph in translations and commentaries. Let me explain. It means respectable clothing with modesty and self-control. It also means with decency and propriety wearing appropriate clothing, which is neat and plain. Simple clothing. Plain can be without prints, with prints, but simple, not flashy, not extravagant, neat and plain. That is what the Holy Word says. The next thing that the Word says is modest apparel with shamefacedness. I have not even heard that word except in the Bible. Have you heard it used anywhere else? Shamefacedness and sobriety. God told me to divide shamefacedness and sobriety into two different sections so that you will understand what shamefacedness is and I will understand what shamefacedness is. So what is shamefacedness? Shamefacedness in the King James Version, the original translation means having shame. Dictionary meaning means extremely modest, extremely shy, extremely modest. Does your clothing and my clothing go into that level? Extremely modest and extremely shy. It also means being bashful red face, restrained by shame, firm in modesty, that nobody changes your decision in being modest, firm in modesty. And this is the best part I love. It says that not exposing body parts that are not for sale, not exposing body parts that are not for sale. How do you dress up my sister? How do you dress up my brother? In the, not in the four walls of your house. Even there you have to have modesty. How do you dress up in, 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 in outside in the stores? Are you extremely modest? What about a beach when you go to the beach? Are you extremely modest? Having shame? Not exposing body parts that are not for sale? Me and my husband went to the beach because we wanted our son to see the sea. To see the, to the, see the sea. I was the only one on the beach looking crazy. You know why? I had this long skirt all the way to my ankle. I had this three-fourth blouse all the way to my to my hands, like three-fourth all, all the way covering my hands. I had this scarf on my head. 
they just knew when they saw me she doesn't belong here yeah i did not belong there but i was not going to take my son away from the god's creation which is the sea i wanted him to see the water i wanted him to see the water they all looking like all women in bikinis bikini some of them have clothes that are no explanation everything hanging out everything hanging out that is not shame facedness that is look at me my body is toned those parts only should be shown to your husband in the marriage bed inside the bedroom not on the beach for everybody to say guess what spirits you are attracting the marine spirits the water spirits you are walking naked pleasing her who is in the water you are attracting those spirits it is so important that you do not expose your body parts that are not for sale remember that and again i forgot to tell you about the disclaimer this video is only for people who want to learn about holiness i'm so sorry i didn't say that who want to learn about holiness who are on their journey for holiness or who want to uh, you know are intrigued by holiness you know so this is not for people who think that mm, 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 mm. my culture is not your culture my culture is um doesn't believe in that we have all our life worn bikini and we don't see anything wrong well my sister you are wrong you are wrong because if you call yourself a a christian and i was wrong too that's why i'm telling i would not say anything that i have not done it personally first i thought that the indian culture was my culture father told me no you are wrong you are wrong you are not of indian culture you're of indian descent you had to be born in somewhere i just chose indian culture for you but you are not indian your culture is not indian your culture is a heavenly culture your culture is a christian culture your culture is biblical culture the word of god is above your head this is the rule this is the governance that goes over you if you are an american the word of god above your head this is the rule that you follow it is not american culture it is not african culture it is not indian culture it is the holy word of god that rest on your head that you are ruled by this word this is a jewish culture this is a biblical culture this is what we follow so that was the first word shame facedness the second word is sobriety in the king james version mostly this term is used for alcohol you know being sober and not being too much drunk but here the scripture is referring it with dressing sense you need to be sober when you dress used with alcohol the same seriousness god is asking with dressing hmm isn't it interesting let's keep on moving what does the word sobriety mean in different commentaries the first translation is having temperance or self restraint in dressing modestly rewind it being serious in dressing and dressing that is not distracting dressing in a way that is not distracting take a you know a, a a idea of your own life like a flashback of your own life where all did you distract by seductive dressing by exposing by alluring and indian culture we don't even have to expose we can just wear all these flashy jewels that is so distracting all oh, our culture itself is glitter and glamour anything that is shiny we are attracted to i think the african culture is just like that we are attracted because we all are brothers that's why we are attracted to something that is flashy indian culture it can be one dollar thing but it still has to be flashy it can be a pocketbook it still has to be flashy it can be shoes it still has to be flashy it can be a clip on your head it still has to be flashy why the word says sobriety wow wow the third translation or the third commentary sobriety means not given an excessive indulgence in dressing up not taking too much time not indulging too much not taking too much time in dressing not indulging too much in dressing up we women take more than an hour men how much time do you take brothers how much time do you take in dressing up and the fourth and the most important translation is be rational 
clear-headed in choosing modest clothing. So when you open your closet, do you stand there and say, mm, that is not what Jesus likes. That would not be sanctioned by Abba. What about that? Is it something plain that you're selecting? Something modest with shamefacedness and being rational, like not being drunk, but making a decision rationally? Or how do we choose that? How do we choose that? being rational and clear-headed in choosing modest clothing. And the next is a knot with broided hair. Broided hair. Broided hair. I didn't even understand what that was. So what I used to do, I was just skipping mm, whatever it meant. I don't know. I'm not attached to hair. I don't like hair like that. I mean, God gave me hair. That's fine. I used to skip. And when research was done on that, it blew my mind. I don't even know if I can talk, but let me keep on talking because I am excited right now. What does broided hair mean? The true definition of broided hair means woven together, stitched, sewn into, plaited, or simply twisted together. Did you catch that? Rewind it if you didn't catch it. Broided hair is ungodly hairdos, which also includes heat styling, perming, jerry curling, curling, use of any hair attachments, fixing weave-ons, wearing of weaves, box braids, dreadlocks, bob braids, African braids, bohemian braids, conroe braids, crochet braids, feed-in braids, fulani braids, Ghana braids, dookie braids, ombre braids, tree braids, tribal braids, twist braids, loose braids, knotless braids, rubber brand braids, braids with beads or pearls, micro braids, so on and so on and so on. I don't even know what they are because I never braided my hair. I have plaited my hair, never. But the Holy Word says all of these come under the description of broided hair. And then he explains why you and I should not wear it. Not because he doesn't want us to look cute. Not because he doesn't want us to look pretty. But there is a spiritual attachment to hair. Listen to what he says. In the first century, and we are also talking about the Egyptian culture, in the first Roman first century Roman culture, as well as the ancient Egyptian culture, women would customarily braid or twist their natural hair into um, natural hair high onto their heads, often decorating their locks, locks with jewels and gold adornments to garner attention. But why does the Lord say absolutely no braiding of hair? It says that it is a pig, there is a pagan, it is a pagan practice rooted in obeying demons. When people had fertility issues, that was back in the day in Jacob's time, or even throughout 500 BC to 1500 BC that time, when they had fertility issues, instead of seeking God, the Yahweh, they consulted false gods who advised them to braid their hair as a magical token to get more fertility power into their bodies. The pagan goddess, Mother pagan goddess she's called as mother astarte she's also called as astrot her other names are easter asher asher and her alter ego is called anent who is the consort of baal you know who baal is right in the bible all of those names belong to the mother astarte who is a pagan goddess of fertility right from the bronze age and all of these documentation you find in the ancient text called the ugaritic ugar ugaritic text spelling is u g a r i t i c k c t i c ugaritic text from the south arabian text this is history this is not imagination. This is all right there in the books, right? That's why the word of God says these people used to do it and they do it honoring Astarte and praying to her. And that was a covenant. They did God, goddess, if you give me my baby, I'm going to tie my hair and braid my hair in honor for you. There is a satanic covenant already made in the spiritual realm with the hair, with the braided hair. 
let me tell you something else that will blow your mind my catholic friends i am so sorry i love you i was i did my nursing in convent but i love you and i want you to know something about something about what i'm going to tell you this is not to offend you but to open your eyes and if you think you you need more um revelation talk to the holy spirit about what i'm going to tell you next the ugaritic text that is back in the days of father jacob from that text they also called goddess astarte guess what is her name queen of heaven queen of heaven who do we call queen of heaven who do catholics call him queen of heaven mm. mother mary is with jesus she's happy she's doing what he's asking to do she's worshiping she's madly in love with her creator she is not praying for you beloved please there is only one mediator one mediator his name is the lord jesus christ of nazareth he took the beatings for you he took the pain for you he took the bruising for you mother mary didn't do anything she said do what he says that is what she said let us be let us not go help in idol worship so when you call the queen of heaven mother mary is not coming who is coming who is performing miracles who is doing it you know it you know it it is astarte it is aster it is easter it is anant she's coming in the spirit realm and answering your prayers let us be wise let us be wise let us keep on moving into some more ancient historical um implications about hair the egyptian ancient drawings and statues shown with braids and shown were shown with braids and weaves even the drawings you saw locks of um hair mummified remains of egyptian egyptians with locked wigs have been re recovered from ar archaeological sites i am so sorry i can't see because i forgot to turn on the other light and you know i have had eye surgery i cannot really see i'm so sorry for stuttering and stumbling with these writings um plaiting and braiding of hair represented serpents and egyptians worshiped serpents and other cobra other snakes like cobras and other poisonous snakes which they had in their possession and if you learn even queen um uh you know i can't remember her name right now queen not nefertari uh cleopatra she dies by a poisonous snake you know all of those history they they have snakes in their possession that is their god so they have to have snakes and when they have their hair braided like that that is to worship him and to represent him whatever serpentine spirit it is so it was their belief that braids in their the hair braids in the form of serpentine spirits or serpents uh, prevented them from attacks of any kind of evil spirits against them so that is why they had braids as well those serpentine spirits on their hair protected from protected them from evil spirits is what they believed also the braids divinely protected them braiding and weaving were also a part of the egyptian adornment and jewelry so that was integral when they dress up they had to braid their hair because that was a part of the jewelry that they that they did to adorn themselves the next thing putting on beads and pearls see the word of god says do not put beads and pearls but we never knew why look at what the egyptian ugaritic text says ugaritic thread text says putting on beads pearls and other costly attachments was a way of worshiping their gods and the woman who does this herself promotes herself to become a goddess she becomes a goddess in the spirit realm mm. isn't that powerful again this goes back to the garden of eden where the lord says um where the serpent actually says to eve in genesis 2:5 didn't you know if you do this you'll be you'll be like god we have a desire our flesh always wants attention attraction affirmation we want to be known so bad that is a flesh in us that is a fleshly desire we subconsciously want to be like god and that is that is a demonic 
agenda from the pits of hell where Satan is saying, you are God. You want to be God? You are God. You don't have to submit to him. Do everything that he says not to do. You will become your own God. You are God is what Satan says in right Genesis, in Genesis 2, 5. Don't you know you will be like God if you eat that fruit? Don't you know you will be like God if you put those pearls in your head? In India, Indian sadhus, priests, um, sages we call them, kept dreadlocks to honor the Hindu deity Shiva, which is called the destroyer. It's also described in the Vedic Hindu scriptures, if you want to Google that, right from 1500 BCs, derived from the Dravidian word called Katai. His hair is called Katai. That means twisted hair or twisted locks of hair. It is believed that he holds the holy river Ganges, we call it Ganga in Indian language, is flowing from his locks. He has held it by power. Um, the weaves of locks of hair has special powers with the spirits the the excuse me the weaver of or the bearer of the locks of hair has special powers in the spirit realm also they believe the wearer of these locks or braids or dreads becomes an immortal traveler between the two worlds he can do astral projection from the physical world into the spiritual world he can also become immortal if he has a covenant with the spirit he has mastery over the fire in the Hindu scripture. Those who have braided hair, matted hair, uh, knotted hair, they have mastery over fires. That's why you see Hindu sadhus, they walk through fire, they have walked through hot coals. Nothing happens to them. Why? Because of the power in their hair. Hair has power in the spiritual realm, especially knotted hair, because you attract demons. Next thing, attracts demons, serpentine spirits, marine spirits, medusa spirits, any demonic spirits that are attached to hair. You see why God says no attachments, no braiding, no knotting, because you are attracting spirits, all of these spirits from the world, from the underworld. Buddhism, the same thing. Buddhism, Buddha himself. Buddha in American pronunciation, we call him Buddha. In Indian, Asian, we call him Gautama Buddha. Buddha, Buddhan or Buddha has the same thing. He has knotted hair. All pictures of Buddha or Buddha has knotted hair. His power was in his dreadlock as well. He piled it on the top of his head as a knot and he believed in, you know, that's where he used to get his, um, uh, he wanted to attain reincarnation, but that's where he attained his wisdom uh, under the people tree or under the oak tree we call to, to meditate and to enter into transcendental meditation. Later on, now, Buddhist saints don't even have hair. They shave it off and they give it as an offering to the demon gods to get blessed. When I give you my DNA, my, which is my hair, that's my DNA, that's part of me. When I'm offering it to you, you need to give something back to me. So they're offering these hair to get powers. Isn't that something? The next religion that has hair is the Rastafari religion. I did not even know about it till I came to the United States. It is rising from the proliferation of the Ethiopianism and the Pan-Africanism and the Rastafarianism that took roots in Jamaica. So combination of the Ethiopian deities and the Pan-African deities. And they also have some biblical a connection as well because Samson did not cut his hair as well. They believe that growing dreadlocks is a sign of priesthood. They believe that the longer the hair, the deeper the spiritual connection with spirits and ancestors. There's so much about it. I will let you research it on your own. Read it, research it. All of those have spiritual implications in the spiritual world. I would end by this. God created mankind with hair as it is. No braids, no plates, no unnatural hair. The hair was just loose. When he created Eve, he did not have anything done to that hair. That hair was free, loose in its natural state. Natural state. So anything that you do to your hair unnaturally is a sin, according to 2 Timothy 2.9. So to change your natural hair, your state of your natural hair, 
with any kind of way, either chemically, synthetically, artificially, or physically, chemically, synthetically, artificially, or physically, you alter the natural state of your hair, you are in sin, according to 2 Timothy 2, 9. I hope you understand. We just covered hair here. I hope you understand the deep, deep spiritual connections and why God is saying no. There's so much of research. We hardly, it's 40 minutes now. We hardly went into, we hardly touched the surface. I hope the word of God talked to you today, my sister, my brother. That is why we do not braid our hair. That is why we just follow him the way it is. I pray that the scripture talks to you and that you do your own research. You test the spirit. You test, you ask the Holy Spirit to reveal deeper, deeper revelation to you. With this, I bless you. I bless you in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Before I go, I want to tell you one more thing. If you do not know this wonderful Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ, if you have never heard of him, I invite you today to know him. Call him Father. Come into my life. I want to make you my, my Lord and my Savior. Forgive me of all my sins that I have done, knowingly and unknowingly. And I invite you. Would you be my Father? Would you be the Lord of my life? And the moment you say this simple prayer, he comes into your life. The scripture is so simple that a five-year-old child can understand. It is so simple. I bless you in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Till next time we meet together, may the Lord Jesus be with you. Amen and shalom. God bless you.